folks, it's Speedy Stevie video time again. Here's a video from Ford about a very special guy. They call him the Ford Fanatic. Specifically, he loves to collect and drive unique, high-performance machines from Ford Performance and Carroll Shelby. Come take a walk around this Ford Fanatic's working garage, or as he likes to call it, the Car Cathedral, for a rare look at his collection of Ford GTs, special edition Mustangs, vintage Shelbys, and every piece of Ford memorabilia he can get his hands on. I'm Angelo Paletta from Burlington. This is the Car Cathedral. Yeah, I'm definitely a Ford fanatic. Uh, I'm car crazy. Just love cars. I have no other real passion. No boats, no cottages, no bikes. Cars are it. This is a combination car storage not a museum, definitely a working garage that people can come and see. Uh, I have a second story man cave with a 50 style diner, big screen TV, a whole bunch of memorabilia from Ford, big, small. Of course, I have a Christmas tree. It's Christmas every day of the year at the Car Cathedral. And uh, it's just a place to come and relax, have some fun, have some pizza, charity events, get together, barbecue, whatever. So I have OCD obsessive car disorder. Ford's been part of my life from day one. My father in the late 50s was Ford. You know, he drove Ford station wagons, he had Torinos. He eventually graduated to Lincolns. Still drives a Lincoln today. So the blue oval has been in my blood for quite a while. So this one here is a 2006 Canadian spec Ford GT. This car had 24 and a half miles on when I bought the car. It's never been plated, it has 29 miles on it. All those miles have been done in my driveway. And this is really a super pristine car. Uh, it is a collector's item with the original stickers, plastic on the seats, the original window stickers from the factory. And you see it's a Canadian spec car because you actually see the Canadian flag on the windshield. So this Ford GT is actually the first Ford GT I purchased. It's the American racing colors, white with blue stripe. This is more of a daily driver for me. It's been on rallies in the States. One thing that's really neat about this car is we did in honor of Carroll Shelby when he passed away, and he actually signed the center console on this car. This is an exact recreation of the 1968-69 Double Le Mans winner. It's a recreation of car 1075. It's the only car to win Le Mans two years in a row. Ford actually used this car on display when they launched a 2006 Canadian Ford GT. But what's really unique about this car, it's exactly what it was built in the 60s. So the roof comes out with the door, it has the fuel cells are actually in the door sill, and there's two, one on each side. This has the full five-point harness. You can still see the little rings. That was ventilation. Right-hand drive, right-hand shift, and you'll see the actual inside here. You see all the switches, which Ford then reproduced in 2006 when they built the 2005-2006 Ford GT. They used a similar style switch to keep the authenticity of the car. So this has true 48 IDA Webers. Everyone knows the bundle of snakes, which was the exhaust for the cars back then, and has a five-speed ZF transaxle. So mid-engine mounted car, transaxle behind it, the clamshell like they had in the 60s. As I said, this is about 95% accurate to the original car. So this is the car that won Le Mans from 66 to 69. Now, we move to 2016, 2017, and the new Ford GT that won Le Mans 50 years later in 2016. And they created a street car at the same time they created a race car. These cars were basically designed and built simultaneously so that the street version mimics the race car. Obviously, there's things in a race car you can't put in a street car, but Ultimately, this is the same as the race car. It's an amazing feat of engineering. It's another piece of rolling art. So the interior of this car was also custom ordered. It's called launch control. 
and uh, it's the orange that matches the spacesuits from the astronauts uh, when they were going to uh, one of their space shuttle runs. Carbon fiber interior, the paddles, all the controls are on the steering wheel, and you can drive it. It's, it's another great piece. This is a 2009 GT500 KR edition, basically a remake of the 1968 KR that Shelby came out with. Um, one of only 22 in Canada. Neat car, lots of power, very tight, supercharged, cold air intake, carbon fiber piece here. But so the Shelby caps were stock with the car over the coolant reservoirs. Handles very well and it's, it's a good daily driver. This is a very unique piece. This is an original Shelby Cobra, all aluminum, an original 427 side oiler motor, and NASCAR big spline four speed top loader. What's very unique about that is that both of those pieces were built by Bill Parson from Southern Automotive. And he actually built transmissions and engines for Shelby in the 60s. It's number two of only 12 American-made cars. Another neat piece about this car has aluminum inner wheel fenders. It's the only one in the world that I know of that has that. And it was actually done by a gentleman who apprenticed in England, making the aluminum bodies for Ace for Shelby. The engine on this car is spectacular, all original. 427 side oiler. The car's only got about 200 miles on the car. I'm the only person to ever drive this car. Uh, I found it in a warehouse in San Jose, California. Uh, it had been purchased by the gentleman in 1997, second year after Shelby started again, and it sat in his warehouse until I bought it in 2010. Original bias ply tires, and uh, very loud, very hot. And the car is all made by hand. This is a hand-rolled aluminum Shelby Cobra. This is a 2001 Superformance 427 SC Shelby Cobra. These folks have the license to build the cars for Shelby. I uh, got this car in 2001. This was the third car into Canada. The car actually has been signed by Carol Shelby on the glove box. It has Wilwood racing brakes, Bilstein racing shocks. Uh, it's the original layout of the 1965 car. It has original Smith and Lucas gauges and an original wood steering wheel. Putting out well over 550 horse, four barrel carburetor, double pumper, and uh, this car is very light, goes very, very fast. Beautiful car to drive on a nice day. And when you really want to get on it, you can get on it. And she goes. Again, another piece of nostalgia. A great partnership with Ford and Shelby back in the 60s. Fantastic car. The last car in my mini Ford museum is the 2012 Boss 302 Laguna Seca model. This is one of only 30 in Canada. 2012 was the only year that this car was available in Canada and the only year that they had the two-tone paint where the spoiler and the roof and side stripes and wheels all matched. And they only built this car for two years, 2012 and 2013. This car has the full Recaro racing seats as well as five-point harnesses for both the driver and passenger, has no rear seat, and a fully integrated roll cage into the car. This car is also meant for the track. Uh, it is a normally aspirated car with approximately 444 horsepower. Great cars, a lot of fun. You know, it's just, it's a great hobby. I do a lot of charity work with the cars, a lot of rides, and I like opening it up to you know, a lot of people to see it, especially kids. I even like kids sit in the car, sometimes their parents. But, you know, it's great to get the enthusiasm from the kids and hopefully their future Ford customers when they get old enough.
that's it for another Speedy Stevie video. Subscribe now.